This is your Tech News Briefing for Wednesday, September 28th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Four, three, two, one. The sounds of success. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. As NASA scientists celebrate crashing a satellite into an asteroid on purpose. On Monday evening, the spacecraft, part of the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, collided with the space rock to test whether it could be pushed off its course. Now, this asteroid didn't pose a danger to Earth, but scientists were testing the technology to see if it could be used if, in the future, one does. The asteroid that NASA chose was called Dimorphos, a 525-foot-wide rock orbiting an even bigger asteroid known as Didymos. By measuring the orbit of Dimorphos around Didymos, scientists hope to see that they have changed its path. So when will they know that? And what other lessons are they taking away from this literal crash test? Joining us to discuss this is our science reporter, Island Woodward. Hi, Island. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Zoe. So experts say this asteroid posed no risk to Earth, but the idea was to move it in case we, you know, need to move one in the future. And we know it hit, but when will we know if it actually moved the asteroid? So it's going to take weeks for astronomers on Earth to utilize observations from ground-based telescopes. So almost 40 telescopes across seven continents are all looking right now at the asteroid system where the DART spacecraft hit. And so over the next weeks, astronomers are going to be trying to calculate the change in Dimorphos's orbit, the change in the orbit of the asteroid that the craft hit. And they can calculate this because these telescopes see the distant asteroid and the one that it is orbiting around as a single point of light. But the brightness of that light dims ever so slightly when dimorphous passes in front of the other asteroid. And so the frequency of that dimming can be measured. So right now they're going to look at what changed in that frequency. How much are they hoping to move it? So right now it takes dimorphous, the asteroid that got hit, about 11 hours and 55 minutes to orbit once around Didymos, the larger asteroid. And so they hope to shrink that by minutes. And actually, one of the experts I was talking to said that could change by anywhere from seven-ish minutes to maybe even up to an hour. And the extent of that change really depends on the properties of the dimorphous asteroid that scientists don't really have a great handle on yet. The only images we've had of dimorphous up to this point have been sort of fuzzy radar images that were collected almost decades ago. And so the images collected from the DART spacecraft's onboard camera before it impacted are really going to help sort of hone in on those those composition and density and mass estimates. And then the European Space Agency is sending another mission there with the hope of landing on Dimorphos on 2026. And that mission is going to sort of, one, help characterize the impact crater from the DART spacecraft, and then also really cement the asteroid's mass. And the reason why it's really important to sort of understand all these characteristics about the asteroid and then understand how much momentum got transferred and therefore how much the asteroid's orbit got changed is because it helps astronomers and scientists hone models of other asteroid impacts, of other asteroid mitigation scenarios that aren't necessarily this one. So it's helping our computer models a lot. So orchestrating, you know, a hit of an asteroid that's millions of miles away can't be easy. How did they ensure that it got to the right place at the right time? That's a great question. The impact occurred 7 million miles away from Earth. At that distance, using the Deep Space Network, it takes more than a minute to get a signal from the spacecraft to Earth and back. And so they had to develop this autonomous navigational system. They call it SmartNav. And it's basically the craft is steering itself for the last minutes of its life. And the way they facilitated this is SmartNav will lock onto the dimmer of the two objects that it sees in its field of view. And so it was extra tricky because um, the space art couldn't even see Dimorphos until like an hour before impact. For the past weeks, it's been aiming at this single point of life 
that represents both Didymos and Dimorphos. So Dimorphos sort of peaked out around behind Didymos around 6 p.m. yesterday, so about an hour and 15 minutes before impact. And then the scientists had to tell SmartNav, okay, we have a different target in our field of view. Please lock onto that one and, and head towards that one. So that's why it was so tricky. So what comes next after this success? Well, I spoke with NASA's planetary defense officer, Lindley Johnson, and he told me that sort of the technology that DART has demonstrated, this kinetic impactor technology, is just one tool in NASA's planetary defense arsenal. There are other technologies that are less mature that I think perhaps NASA might pivot to testing out now. So one of those is an ion beam deflector, so where they, they fly a spacecraft up close to the asteroid and they they shoot a bunch of ion beams at it in the hopes of sort of altering its course. Another option that they're exploring is something called a gravity tractor, where they go and they park a spacecraft really close to the asteroid and the gravity of the spacecraft affects the gravity of the asteroid and sort of tugs it along into a new orbit. And then, of course, there's also always nuclear deflection on the table. So the idea, a little bit like Armageddon, where they, they detonate in the hopes of breaking up the asteroid. And of course, this comes with a, a lot of issues because you don't want to break up one big rock into a bunch of tiny rocks that then hit Earth instead. And of course, nuclear fallout is an issue. But the reality is, is that many of these technologies, including the one displayed in the DART mission, they require 5, 10, 20 years of heads up uh, in order to be successful. And the nuclear detonation option does not. So another thing that they're doing, really, because they know they need this advanced warning time, is they are working on sending up a space telescope called the Near-Earth Object Surveyor. And that space telescope will help astronomers spot asteroids that have so far been hidden. All right, that's our reporter, Eileen Woodward. Thanks for joining us, Eileen. Thank you so much for having me today, Zoe. I really appreciate it. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.